Guess Who's Back is one of the most bizarre movies I've ever seen. It's a film where I really can't tell what the um, the filmmakers were going for. Was it supposed to be a satire of Hitler? Was it supposed to be a celebration of him? Was it supposed to be commentary on the failures of current German politics? I don't really know. Ultimately, though, this movie, I think, might be the most impressive, I guess, kind of edgier, far-right um, propaganda film, whether that's intentional or not. And I doubt it's intentional. It kind of turned out that way. So Guess Who's Back is based on a novel, apparently, uh, which is about Hitler after um, sometime in 1945 when he's in his bunker vanishes and then he shows up again in 2014 Germany and it's kind of a fish out of water comedy about him adapting to uh, modern Germany and trying to restart his political movement. But the portrayal of Adolf Hitler in the film is somewhat similar to Mr. Bean, strangely enough. He's kind of portrayed as a lovable, somewhat clumsy and bubbling figure, but also one who uh, truly loves and cares about the German people. Um, it's kind of funny because, as you may know, I, I have some various criticisms about Hitler and the Nazi party. This movie actually kind of improved my opinion of him more than just about anything else has. It's it's really um, funny. Like I said, I don't really think that was intentional. So from what I was able to determine about this film, half of it is is um, like scripted and the other half is uh, the guy who plays Hitler walking around and talking to average Germans in character. And a lot of them, uh, we'll get into how they react to him. It's pretty funny. So we have um, a film here that is, I, it's hard because there's really good scenes in the movie and there's good aspects to it. But on the other hand, it's a film that's edited by a monkey. Uh, the movie's two hours long and there's absolutely no reason to be two hours long. You could easily cut half an hour to 40 minutes of this movie without missing anything. And it would make the film, film feel, flow a lot better. In particular, the first third to first half of the film is almost unbearable. It's full of cringe and just bullshit. So that being said, let's just get into this. Um, let's just get into this. So Adolf Hitler wakes up in present-day Berlin in a park... Uh, where his former wartime bunker once stood. Because, of course, as part of denazification, they destroyed the Fuhrer bunker, or whatever it's called. And that stuff pisses me off, because regardless of how you feel about the Nazis, wouldn't that be cool to be able to go and like see this big underground bunker? Uh, but no, they filled it with concrete and destroyed it. So he, we have this kind of fish-out-of-water thing where he's walking around Berlin in his um, uniform, and he's trying to figure out uh, where he is. He's like, oh, uh, where, where am I? When am I? Etc., etc. So he sees Turks everywhere. So he believes that um, Goebbels was able to get the, um, or sorry, Goering was able to get the Ottoman Empire to join Germany in World War II, and the Turks had sent troops to help the war effort. So that's who he thinks the uh, the Turks are, so that's pretty funny. So basically, a newspaper kiosk, and he begins to um, read through a bunch of papers, and he, he looks about the modern-day issues in Germany. It's kind of funny. He, he taught, gives his view of the various political parties. Um, he refers to the Christian Democrats as being a bastard pathetic offshoot of his ideology which is kind of bizarre a strange way of putting it um he really hates the social democrats but at the same time you get the impression he refers to the um the social democrats he fought against in the 1930s and he looks at the modern ones and he thinks like the modern socialists are just scum um they, they aren't as masculine they're, they're just like compared to the socialists of his era the modern ones aren't really even worthy adversaries. The only party he actually kind of likes is the Green Party. Um, and he basically says he would vote for it. 
Now, that kind of makes sense because something people often forget about National Socialism is um, stewardship of the environment and animal protection laws were a core part of the party's program. In fact, they were one of the, I think they were the first country on earth to establish a comprehensive animal protection laws. So as Hitler's wandering around, he comes across a failed TV producer, uh, Fabian Sowitsky. Sowitsky, actually I don't think he actually is Jewish, who was filming a crappy documentary about the children of Berlin. But he comes across Hitler and he goes, this would be perfect to make a TV program. So in the movie, everyone just thinks Hitler is a method actor. Um, everyone thinks that he's just in character all the time and that's how he's so good at being Hitler despite the fact that he's Hitler. So they initially kind of want to make a animal-based show like Hitler and animals, but a, a dog attacks him and he shoots the dog with a pistol. Uh, and then there's this really bizarre scene where he is using the dog like, like a puppet to um, scare the guy who he's hanging out with. So the um, Hitler and Animal show didn't work, so they decide to make the, the show about politics. So Hitler goes around Germany and talks to various people about issues. So the people of Germany, and I think this is unscripted, interestingly, this is before the refugee crisis started, uh, but basically all the people complain about refugees, people complain about out-of-control crime rates, people complain about... Uh, the government not helping the German poor and the German working class and instead focusing all their time and attention on Turks and Africans. Uh, you even have a guy who does goes into a, a speech about IQ and how... Um, so he, he starts, he goes around and he basically um, starts talking about how the little people need to put their trust in a strong man to throw out all the corrupt politicians, to basically take down the oligarchy, to take down kind of the kleptocracy and the rule by people for their own interests and to give the um, average German a voice again. And it's funny because a lot of people really take to it. Uh, most of the people they interview say that Hitler's ideas really sound like they'd be something that appeals to them. They're tired of immigrants. They're tired of um, being sidelined in favor of foreigners. So they really want to follow someone who seems to have some sort of plan. So after they, they finish kind of making this documentary, they go to Berlin and they introduce Hitler to the TV station where he works. So they decide to use Hitler as, in one of their comedy shows because, once again, they still think he's a method actor. So um, before the show, Hitler learns about the internet and uses the web to learn about the modern world. Um, and he sees TV and he goes, this is the greatest tool for propaganda ever invented. And there's kind of a funny scene where he's watching TV and it's a cooking show. And he starts screaming about how it's a waste of um, a time when it could be used to promote um, stuff for the German race instead of this degeneracy. And so back to just kind of the guy who was making the documentary with Hitler. Um, he's a massive cuck. Um, he is like the biggest pussy, the biggest wuss ever. And there's this really cute German girl, well, everyone's German, but there's this cute girl at his office, although she's destroyed herself with piercings and wearing goth shit, and it turns out that her family are all Satanists, and that she is Jewish, of course. So she's really cute, and she kind of likes Hitler because Hitler's an alpha male. But because of Hitler's association with the other guy, she try, she agrees to go out with the other guy. And they, like, go back to her place. And she's like, why don't you stay overnight? And he's like, I have to call my mom because I live with her. And she's like, no, I mean, why don't you stay overnight? And he's like, well, there's only one bed. I guess we'll sleep on the couch. He's like, I'll sleep with you on the couch. And he's like, I don't think there's enough room. So he's just, he's a massive cuck and they try to have sex and he just starts crying. And it's kind of contrasted with Hitler in this movie who, well, kind of bumbling is a lot more kind of masculine and strong compared to just 
what pussies the, the, the modern Germans are. So they decide to put Hitler on a, a comedy program, um, kind of the, the chair of the uh, TV station, put him on this, this channel with this really degenerate guy who basically just dresses up. Uh, like he'll dress up as the Pope, but just run around like half naked or like Obama and stuff like that. So Hitler goes on and there's kind of a funny scene where there's just like two minutes of silence. And then he starts making a speech like about degeneracy. He starts talking about um, how television has brainwashed the masses and how they've lost sight of national purpose. And he just kind of goes on an edgy rant. And and clips of him start going viral and they auto-tune it and, and stuff like that. So he becomes a comedy hit. Um, and his unintentional proudness just gets better and better. So people enjoy him as a figure of fun, but a lot of people are starting to really connect with his ideas. So the, the whole thing collapses, though, when they discover the footage of him shooting the dog. So it ruins the career of Hitler and the, the woman who's running the, the network. Um, so Hitler publishes a new autobiographical book about his life in the 21st century, um, which I believe is titled Look Who's Back. So it's kind of like a movie within a movie or a book within a book. So the book is immensely popular and overshadows Hitler's controversy with killing the dog. So soon after, the book is turned into a film and the TV station um, goes into a, a downward spiral without Hitler. And we get this scene where the, um, the guy who fired Hitler has a has this scene where he starts ranting against a parody of uh, the thing in, in um, Downfall. So we have kind of a, a funny um, scene where Hitler goes and talks to members of the NDP or the National Democratic Party, which is kind of the modern neo-Nazi party in Germany. Although, as um, Earl of Grey told me when I asked him, he said it's almost entirely composed of government spies. The whole thing basically is, is government spies who are like, yeah, join the, um, the, the new Nazi party. Um, it's it's really good. It's totally not a um, trap for far-right activists. So basically, he just calls them like a bunch of degenerate pussies. And he goes to their headquarters and he just yells at them and just kind of drags them through the mud. And he's like, you're the new national socialists. You're, you're fucking pussies compared to me. And he just basically kind of rakes them across the coals and calls them degenerates. So while this is happening, the guy who first found Hitler reviews the old footage and discovers a Terminator-esque ball of energy, which caused Hitler to appear. So returning to the site, he finds Bert Lees and realizes that Hitler is not a, a method actor. He was actually a... Um, he was actually the real Hitler all along. Ironically, Hitler gets beat up by a group of neo-Nazis who think that he's satirizing um, their idol. So the um, the guy gets into a fight with Hitler, who no sorry with the uh, the, the female television producer, and he tries to tell her that he's the real Hitler, and he starts screaming, um, and he trashes the hospital room in frustration and goes back to the movie su uh, studio. Um, he forces Hitler with the pistol he took from Hitler earlier in the movie to the the roof, and we had this really strange scene that really seems like the filmmakers are trying to celebrate Hitler. So they have an argument where the one guy in just kind of a cucky way just yells at Hitler and he's like, you're evil! You're full of hate! You're just a big evil man! So Hitler starts talking and he's like, I was elected by the German people. If I'm evil, then every single one of them is evil. If, if I'm evil, then democracy is evil because I came to power. And he's like, what would you do? Ban democracy? remove it you 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 attack me because you you believe i oppose democracy but i i won a free, free election whereas it, it, so it's kind of a contradiction so he talks about um he just goes on about um he's like if if everything i did was evil then the german people are wholly evil because they supported me 
So um, he shoots Hitler in the face and he falls off the roof to his apparent death. So after he apparently dies, Hitler um, appears behind the guy talking about how he cannot be killed and his legacy can never end because he is part of every German. So then it's, it's revealed the entire scene was part of the, was the last movie in the film and that the guy who shot Hitler was just a body double in a silicone mask. The real guy had been committed to a, a mental hospital after his rant that Hitler um, was the one who was, was the real guy. So they just figure he's insane. So he's in a, a mental hospital and his uh, girlfriend comes to visit him. So after the, um, the, the filming of the movie finishes and it gets released to rave reviews and becomes a hit, Hitler talks about how he is on the path to power and he's more popular than ever. Um, he says that there's rising nationalism in Germany and that they're ready for him to come back. So the film ends with Hitler's words, I can work with this, as it shows a montage of uh, real-life right-wing demonstrations. And with Hitler and the, um, the blonde female movie producer riding in the backseat of an open Mercedes convert convertible, kind of like what it was like back in the 30s. So what can be said about this movie? Was this movie saying that modern Germany needs to come to terms with Hitler to kind of say National Socialism was an all bad in that there are there's something that's been lost in the um the denazification. Uh I think actually in the the part where they're talking to Germans, a bunch of them talk about the guilt complex and how they aren't allowed to have a national identity anymore in the aftermath of World War Two. So well, I think it's completely unintentional because I think there's something you have to understand about the left. They don't understand how we think on the right. So what they will do is they will basically just take things we say and repeat them and be like, well, I um, re really just really or wow, just wow. And they, they don't really know how to argue against it or how to really analyze it. I think the best example of this is probably the Colbert Report. If you ever watch the Stephen Colbert do comedy, basically what he does is he just directly takes what conservatives say and he just says it in a funny way. It's, it's not even really satire. You can basically, as a rightist, watch the show and enjoy it. It just seems like a right-wing comedy show because he doesn't understand really how to ridicule the perspective. He just can copy it. Uh, the other really good example is Rorschach. Um, people often use him that he was kind of supposed to be a parody of the far right, but basically he just kind of took the far right's ideal and played it completely straight. And people just identified with the character and he was just completely baffled and everyone was baffled by how popular he was because he wasn't supposed to really be that sympathetic but they just can't understand us and that's kind of what this movie is they just basically had hitler say things that he said in mein Kampf, um and people were just like yeah that sounds good we're tired of this just just being such a pathetic groveling country we want to make germany great again so unintentionally, this movie is is really kind of a good far right film. Um, it it actually made me like Hitler a bit more. He may be the German Mister Bean, but I'll take the German Mister Bean over Angela Merkel. I think he calls her like a uh, an awkward rotund woman or or something like that. I think though, kind of one of the interesting parts of this, and this is kind of something. I've always kind of been at the core of how I think about Hitler is there's so many different versions of Hitler and I think it, it was kind of deliberate when he was kind of coming to power there's there's um if you read Mein Kampf a lot of it just kind of sounds like a folksy kind of agrarian conservative there's the the demagogic populist there's the um the kind of the gentleman who likes children and animals um, there's like the messianic leader, there's the, the demon, there's so many different versions of Hitler, many of which are kind of mutually exclusive. And I think more than any other politician, he was really good at being all things to all people. Um, he was good at 
letting people when, when they looked at him they they saw whatever they wanted to see um leftists saw a socialist rightist saw a conservative the german people saw an average guy who shared their humiliation after world war one the other figure that hitler kind of really reminds me of in that aspect is abraham lincoln because there's so many different versions of lincoln and people view him in so many different kind of mutually exclusive ways it's almost impossible to define who the real person is is behind the mask as it were so i'd probably actually recommend this movie i'm going to warn you though you're going to want to keep your hand on the skip button and if it if it gets boring just skip five minutes ahead this film is full of filler it could have been a pretty good movie they just really needed to edit parts out as a film, though, I'd recommend watching it more as a movie of ideas, as kind of an exploration of what if Hitler came back, how would he view modern Germany, and how would modern Germany view him. As that, it's good. As an actual movie, it's it's not very good. There's good aspects to it, but overall, it doesn't really hold up. Anyways, that's the reaction review. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Arjun. I'll talk to you guys later.